In this video we're going to be adding the design to the notifications page and we're going to be tidying a few things up because some people have been having problems setting up the source code, getting it up and running. And what's special about this video is not just that it's the last one of the social network series, it's the first ever 1080p how code video. So we were supposed to incorporate the MVC stuff that we learned in the MVC videos into this series. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to do something that's probably a lot more useful. Rather than making our own MVC framework and then sort of incorporating that into our series, we're going to start learning things like Laravel because that'll be a much more useful skill to learn and it makes our life easier because we don't have to create the framework ourselves. So let's get started. So we're going to go to Bootstrap Studio and here is the design I made for the notifications page. It's really simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to display the notifications in sort of this table. So you can see I have one notification here and what we're going to do is we're just going to display them one below the other in a sort of table which makes it really easy for us to sort of convert between this non-designed version and this version here that incorporates our header and our footer and things like that and actually fits in with the rest of our website. So we're going to export this. There's our design exported. So it's just gone onto my desktop and here's our notifications file here. If I open that up, we can see here is the notifications template. So if I open that up in our text editor, you can see here is the template and what we want to do is we want to scroll down to where we find this list group and we want to put in the PHP code that displays our notifications. So what we're going to do is just copy and paste all this HTML into the notifications page. So the PHP is way above the HTML. First what we're going to do is delete this heading, close the PHP block, open a new one, and we're going to copy all this PHP code, and we're going to paste it in here. So if I was to save this, you'll see it's going to look a bit weird. So if I go back to the notification page and refresh, we have our design, but our notification doesn't really fit in with our table. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy one of these notifications and here where it says this person mentioned you in a post, we're going to put in another echo and we're going to paste in that HTML. And what we're going to do is just simply copy this and in between our span tags, we're going to paste it in there. So of course we have to append in our PHP like that. So now if I save this, you can see it says Francis mentions you in a post and our notification sort of fits in with the rest of our design. So we're going to do that down here as well. So we pasted that in there and we're just going to copy this and we're going to replace that with what's already in our span tags. Like that. And again, if we refresh, we're not going to see any difference. So what I'm going to do is just going to post something. I'm going to say at Francis, hello world, post that, refresh. Now we have our second notification and you can see the two notifications tie in nicely together. You can see the rounded corners here and here. That's all Bootstrap doing that for us. So that's our notification system. It's going to be really simple. And finally, what we're going to do is go into our SQL file. We're going to scroll down and you can see we have these constraints. A lot of people were having trouble importing the database because of the constraints. So what we're going to do is just delete the constraints like that. That's all we have to do. The constraints gone now and you'll be able to import the table. So we're just going to delete these. You can always add the constraints again after you've uh, imported the table. So we're going to keep scrolling down and looking for tables with constraints. Apart from the primary key, we can keep that. And we'll delete the last one. So that's all the constraints deleted and now if we were to import that it would work fine, it wouldn't have any problems importing it. And finally one more thing to tidy up in the API, you can see I've already done it. You can see here when we're getting a post request what we're doing is we're assigning the token to the cookie to the value of the session ID and if no cookie exists this is going to return an error. So what we do is we just surround it in an is set if statement just to check if the cookie has been set. And if it hasn't, we just stop the execution of the script. And if we scroll down a bit, we have these three ones here as well. We check if the body is null, the receiver is null, or the user ID is null. And if any of those are null, we either kill the script or we just give body an empty value. That was causing errors whenever I imported the source code. So I just did that and everything appeared to be working again. So that's it for this series. So this series, we learned quite a lot. We did everything from scratch. We learned a lot about security and things like that. But in future, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to make our lives as easy as possible. So we're going to use web frameworks like Laravel and Jam that already have a lot of these features built into them so that we never even have to worry about them because we should end up with a better overall product and it should be easier and quicker to create. But that's it for this series. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. The source code to all of this will be on the GitHub page. But that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.